what up everybody I just wanted to touch base and uh, give an introduction to the video we're about to do um, as you all know I'm gonna get into teaching mobile electronics on a professional level uh, I have a lot of videos out there everyone's talking and showing fancy techniques and work and fabrication and we're gonna get into that too but for those of you that are actually looking to be serious in this uh, just so you know there is a uh, I'll put the link in the description uh, link for getting into the mobile electronic certified professional program. Um, there's three different levels. You got basic, advanced, and master. Uh, basic's been around for a long time. Advanced used to be called first class. Master has been the master level of which uh, last I've known there was like 270 in the entire world or so. So, anyways, uh, we're going to be doing a forerunner in this video. I'm going to teach everybody how to put a camera in. And we're going to also do a stereo to actually give you the image and it works in the reverse gear. And I'm also going to go over some of the techniques and we're also going to show you how to check your harness because there's a lot of amplified vehicles now. Harman Kardon, Bose, Infinity, Bees, Meister, all these different crazy things. And for those of you that don't know, these are the dealership's new way of trying to get us out of the field. So. Uh, integration has become really important so pay attention to how we're gonna start doing things and I'm gonna teach everybody how to address everything on a professional level and not be scared about doing installations and if you're looking to do this as a career it's a great career I've had a lot of fun doing it you're always gonna see new electronics there's gonna be a lot of great things that you're gonna run into vehicles clients different personalities there's no reason why you should have no fun doing this but at the same time being professional, dressing professional, looking and acting the part is key to getting you business and making you a professional in this industry. So stay tuned, watch the video, drop some comments, subscribe, share, and uh, let's let's make some, some money. I start showing everybody how to take apart a part of 4Runner. So of course you should always tell your clients what you're going to do, but anyways. You look under here, there's all the plugs. You don't just pull plugs out. You have to use your pick tool. And what you do is you unlock the lock tang with the tip of your pick tool. So I will go over tearing this apart. I'm gonna maybe make my client hold the camera for me. Hey, so we're back. And I want to show everybody that <clears throat> When you ask your customers for a uh, vehicle information, you have to ask them if they have amplified systems. JBL, Harman Kardon, Bose, yada, yada, yada. It's all a bunch of crap. Everybody should know that if you're doing this. It's just a premium way to charge customers like an extra $5,000 when they buy a car brand new. So this isn't going to work because this is a JBL system. <coughs> we have to get this guy now this is a turn on for the factory amplifier and I'll explain what that means and what that is and all that stuff uh, in a second so let me flip the camera and I'll show everybody uh, what we got here all right and this is what the <laughs> dashboard looks like completely torn apart <clears throat> These harnesses here are what you're looking for when you're matching. So we use Metra's uh, system on mine. You can see that these are the standard Toyota plugs and this is the JBL system. So the other video that I was trying to show everybody is the little bulbs here in the dash that he wanted to replace. These have to be ordered from Toyota. <clears throat> they unscrew on the back, so um, down. So you have your main screws here that pull the dash off. This takes the stereo out. Down here you pull all of this apart and then you have your other missing guy here and this whole bezel pulls off. And of course down there I tear everything apart so I can run my wires. <clears throat> I believe the JBL amp is somewhere in here, but I'm not really... Um, paying attention to that so uh, stay tuned I'm gonna show you guys more on the rear side of how we're gonna do the dash camera um, 
show everybody that you don't have to retain everything. We only use this antenna and stuff, so That's hang tight. Up, so. Now, um, by law, in most states, now you can check with your states or whatever, or if you're studying and you're doing MECP, it'll tell you what states have to have um, vehicle laws for video viewing in the front and stuff. So green is your parking brake. This can be bypassed, and I don't recommend it. <clears throat> Especially if you're in business, but it's entirely up to your discretion. Assuming you're an adult doing this. Okay. Uh, purple is your parking gear. Now, as you can see, my dumbass soldered it already. Um, that's what this needs to solder to. This is your reverse wire output. Now, hopefully, there's enough milliampere output to activate uh, your camera. Okay. So, you got to keep in mind... And again, I'll go over the mathematics and everything with everybody on, on the science and stuff, but there's only so much amperage that can travel through the resistance of a wire. It's usually not a bad thing. You know, when you get over 300 feet, obviously you'll have problems. So, <clears throat> uh, there we go. So if you see, there's panels in the back. Obviously, I don't recommend using this, and I should probably be a better example to everyone. But this pops off, okay? Here's your harness for your light. Now, if you come back outside, you'll see your reverse light is on the top or on the bottom. So this one's obviously the clear lens, and the clear lens is the one without the turn signal in it. Keep that in mind when you're looking at lights. So. Um, sometimes you'll see these there's different plugs like you'll see there's the reverse one up top and everything but this is everything all in one harness and they did that obviously to make things easier and don't have to unplug more stuff so um, <clears throat> if you do decide you need to do that route you're gonna have to uh, creep the wire all the way up and around um, to the front for the stereo now this particular harness gives you the reverse output. Through the years of doing this, I don't recommend uh, relying on that. Sometimes you want to have a backup. So anyways, if you don't have a reverse output or it just suddenly stops and your customer is like, I don't have a reverse camera anymore, you're going to have to go to the tail light. Test the tail light. <clears throat> I'll have to show you guys maybe in another video, but I have an oscilloscope and that becomes a fantastic tool when you start working on higher end vehicles and luxury vehicles like Mercedes. They use a data which is a square wave and what it does is you get a bunch of lines in your monitor when it's on because it's a, it's a pulsed signal, it's not a constant output. And because there's no capacitor or anything in the camera to stabilize the voltage, you get lines in your monitor and it looks like doo-doo so you have to use a relay and have another power source just to remedy stuff like that <clears throat> so uh, back to the wiring harness you see we have our standard color wires white for front, gray for front, purple for right rear, green Okay. Um, orange white or orange is your illumination So you can see, I got my ground and I ran this just in case it is not hooked up to the brake wire or the reverse wire. And then I got this ready to go. We're going to run it all the way to the front. <clears throat> but the reason why I did this is to show everybody that if your trigger wire from the harness doesn't function on the purple white wire, <clears throat> where are you purple white? Uh, right here, well, green purple from the TYTO, but if this doesn't give you reverse output anymore, you can come back here for your customer and change it. Hey, so in this portion of the video, I'm showing everybody that there's a green wire for the brake wire. There's also a purple white, which is for reverse. For whatever reason, they decided to make it a law 
that all these in-dash units have to have a brake wire. What that means is the brake wire has to be engaged in order to see video and use certain functions on your touchscreen. Completely stupid, I know, but it's a safety feature. Some guy bypassed it, killed his family, whatever the case. Alpine actually has two brake wires to simulate this and there's other uh, devices that were created that guys have used in the industry to bypass this still. Bypassing this stuff is completely up to you. I will go over the uh, FMVSS laws, I believe they're called, in the MECP book, where there's certain things and, and laws also are different for each state. But if you're bypassing this stuff, that's completely up to you. And if you're in business, I don't recommend it. But uh, pay attention to the different modules that offer a simulated output. Uh, doesn't always function. So that's one of the key things I wanted to make sure that everyone got here in this part of the video. And make sure you pay attention to checking your work. Always check your work. Don't give your car back to a customer and it's not functioning because a bad demo just shows how unprofessional you are and not doing your fault. All right. <clears throat> okay, we're on to the camera. Check it out. Up here, you have to pull all this assembly apart. You have to pull the rubber boot off. We're gonna get this guy out. This needs to come loose. We're gonna run everything up into here. And all the way down to this crapola inside the panel. You are going to need to pull your wire through this boot and that's going to be so much fun so make sure you move your dash or your roof clips try not to break them having the right tool means a lot so stay tuned okay we're back for more fun I uh, pulled the rear panel off I pulled the weather seal back you can see that the factory camera is right back there okay we're going to pull the camera back and plug in um, that special piece so you're gonna need your 10 millimeter we're gonna pull this guy apart and rule of thumb is you want to try to follow the factory harnessing why forerunners have a window that likes to roll up and down and we don't want that cutting our wire or tearing it, so we need to be extra careful of that. All of these are going to have to come loose in order to pull the beauty panel off, which houses the camera underneath. So that is the next step here. Okay, uh, boys and girls fans, check this out. So <clears throat> we have everything pulled through. Everything's re-clipped together-ish. This is all put back together. Uh, just push this sticky seal crap back up. It's just strip cock. Um, <clears throat> for those of you in the field, modifying stuff, that's how I did the camera. Um, I mean, it's sealed in the door. It's, it's covered. It's not going to get um, rain or anything on it. So... Make sure to clean your hands before you touch anyone's headliner or work with anything. You can see I still got some crap still a little bit from the sticky goop. But we're going to feed the other part of this in now through here so we can connect everything. And then we're going to run it all the way to the front. Okay, check it out. So we ran everything nice and tight through the headliner. I have our microphone mounted up here at the top facing towards the driver. If you look down, you see I got the GPS antenna mounted to the windshield. And it should have a good amount of surface area so it can receive signal. Here is all my wires. So I have my camera, microphone, and GPS antenna now. They're all on one side of the car, so I don't have to run from multiple directions and just tear certain panels apart. So. We're going to pull that through all of this, all the way over here to where our stereo is, and then we're going to start getting the stereo put in, and then I'll show everybody what everything looks like. All right. All righty. What a pain in the arse. Uh, 07 Forerunner. Don't buy the dash kit from Metra. <clears throat> Get the little side bracket kit. I'm just waiting on it. And that should fill in the gap so this fits the dash. 
So we got everything on. ADX 4400. NEX style. Alright, this is the part of the video where you're going to want to set the equalizer. You don't want the customer getting their car back and it sounds like total shit. Uh, if you sell them a stereo, they obviously bought it because they are expecting things to sound better. And I'm really good at that. So, what you need to practice is learning different bands. Long yeah. come with seven, eight, fifteen bands. One third octave, you're usually looking between thirty, thirty-one bands, depending on who manufactures the particular equalizer or processor now that you're working with. Always give them the clock, go through the settings if you need to, and set the EQ, and make the stereo sound good. Don't give them the car back sounding like shit. Pay attention. Uh, let's see here. So, I did a BSM, cycled through everything. I'm gonna fix the EQ, which I left it custom, because of the JBL system already has EQ curves. So, don't wanna use preset junk. <clears throat> I'll go over the time and everything with the client um, once we're done. Um, you do have to go into settings. Oops, wrong ones. Camera settings. And turn it on. Make sure it's on battery. Alright. And then uh, you go ahead and drop it in reverse. And there's your camera. Really sharp, clear picture. And uh, hopefully I'll be done here in a bit. The harness box is underneath right here okay uh, same thing with the steering control module As you can see is the ASWC1 alrighty all done check it out side view in here USB Apple CarPlay works great nice Alright guys, thanks for watching and subscribing. Please share the video. I also have some Patreon. I'm going to put everything in the drop links. And I'm going to also attach the Metro website that I use so you can look up the parts for your vehicles. This way you have an idea. This particular vehicle, for whatever reason, Metra Access, they decided to give the wrong freaking part and the dash bezel trim piece was not the correct one. So again, being in the trade for a very long time, you know certain parts exist and you make it work. So thanks again and uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next video.